You've heard of EasyJet, you've heard of Sun Country, and you've probably heard of Southwest Airlines too, but have you ever heard of Marabu? Either had I, but I've now flown with them, and I didn't even know I was gonna be doing it. If you wanna know all about what it was like, keep on watching. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I've been making travel videos for over 15 years of popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it's like to be there. And I'm also the author of a small book called Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship with travel stories of things that have actually happened to me while traveling around the world, like when airport security stopped me because I had a knife in my bag. And the knife wasn't even the worst thing I had hidden in my bag, but we'll just chalk that up to Dumb things you do when you're a teenager flying for the first time alone. If you want to pick up a copy, it's available on Amazon now, and it's a great way to support what I do here on YouTube. Okay, how did I end up on Marabu Airlines? Well, I'm currently on the Spanish island of Fuerteventura, which is off the coast of Africa, way over here. I'm here with my good friend, Kali, AKA my bodyguard, if you've read the book. We're here for some sun, fun, and tennis. And of course, I'll be showing you around this resort and this room and how we climbed a mountain and all these other things we ended up doing. But when I was looking at flights from my home base of Hamburg, Germany, down here, the one that looked the most attractive to me was actually with Condor Airlines. If you have flown around Europe, you've probably heard of Condor Airlines and Condor was offering one of the few nonstop flights from my home down here to the island on the day that we wanted to leave. So I booked the flight with Condor. The reservation and confirmation I have are all with Condor. And it wasn't until I showed up at the airport basically that I realized I'm not flying with Condor. I'm flying with Marabu. And thanks to Google, I now know that Marabu is actually an Estonian Airlines. If you don't know where Estonia is, it's over here. And in a way, I guess you would consider this also a low cost carrier that flies to sunny places over here in Europe. And according to their website, they use Condor as their ticketing agent. Are you confused? I'm confused. But when I got to the airport, it was a pretty relaxed day. The Lufthansa ground crew were all on strike. So because there were a lot of canceled flights, I think that meant there's a lot of people not at the airport. But it's kind of nice to see things getting back to normal as somebody who's flown a lot, especially right after the whole COVID thing finished. There was a lot of chaos at times and now things seemed to be back to normal. And because I wasn't sure if there would be a meal served on Marabu, I decided to fill up my water bottle from the free water dispenser in the airport and grab myself a sandwich just in case. And that turned out to be an okay idea. Boarding happened by bus, so we left the terminal, got into a bus, the bus drove out to the tarmac where the airplane was parked, and then we climbed up the stairways into the plane. All right, all you airline, uh, I was gonna say freaks, that sounds so mean, but I mean that like in a loving way. Airline experts, how about if I say airline experts? Please let me know, is this an Airbus A320-200 or is this the A320neo? Either way, according to the internet, Marabu doesn't have their own jets, even though they're painted with the name on it, they're just leasing the jets, which apparently led to a bunch of problems when they first launched, but seems to be okay now because we boarded on time and the flight would have left on time, but we had to get de-iced. So that put us back about 20 minutes from schedule, but you know, 20 minutes is not too bad by all means. I was sitting just in normal economy. I had an aisle seat and it is a three and three setup. So if you're two people, you're either gonna be middle and aisle or window and middle. I chose to sit on the aisle because the flight from Hamburg to Fuerteventura is around five hours and I just knew there's no way I'm gonna be able to go five hours without having to pee. Thumbs up if you can relate. And if you've been watching the very unofficial travel guides for a while, you know that I am shorter than average. I am 165 centimeters tall or like around 5'5". Five five. And this is the leg room that I had. So definitely enough for me, but I am not the normal size person. So you may feel cramped in this plane because I think the seats are kind of close together. And I know that when the guy in front of me uh, reclined his seat, it did feel very close to my face. And as I had expected, there were no food or beverages included in the price of my flight. So in the in-flight magazine, which was in the seat in front of me, there was a large menu of selections of snacks, sandwiches, noodles, 
candy bars, things like that, and those were all available for purchase. There was nothing, and I mean nothing, not even a glass of water and some pretzels, nothing included in the fair. And I was surprised, looking through this menu, there were a couple things that I thought, okay, yeah, that does actually sound pretty tasty. That doesn't mean that they would have had it, and uh, you know, the way I know my luck, if I wanted it, then it was definitely sold out. But I was pleasantly surprised that the prices were basically the same prices that you would pay in the airport for a sandwich and a can of soda or something. So that's a positive thing to say. They will make you pay for your snacks on board, but the snacks are just like normal airport prices and not extremely overpriced like you might expect or like I think other airlines do. Another thing to mention is that there were no in-flight entertainment things in the seats. And I know on budget airlines, that's very rarely a thing, but for me, I just feel like on a flight that's five hours long, I kinda did miss it. And they do have uh, onboard Wi-Fi and they say if you log into the Wi-Fi, then even for free, they have like a entertainment system, but then you're using your own device. And if you're watching movies or TV shows for four and a half hours, five hours on your own device, that is really gonna drain the battery. And here's another thing about this plane, there was no place to plug in or charge your phone. So not a lot of bells and whistles in this plane, even though the flight was five hours long. I went and checked out the bathroom. Like I said, I was going to, and uh, this is just a video of the bathroom itself, not me doing what you have to do in the bathroom. If you wanna see that, check out my OnlyFans account. I'm just kidding, I don't have an OnlyFans account. But the bathroom was very clean and seemed well maintained. Recently on a flight on Delta, the bathroom there did not look as nice as the bathroom did here on Marabu, so thumbs up for that too. One interesting thing was the soap dispenser that's like built into the bathroom in the plane was not functioning and up on this little shelf next to the mirror, they had an extra thing of soap and a uh, cleansing thing, but it wasn't, if I understood it correctly, it wasn't a thing to cleanse your hands, it was a thing to like clean the surfaces. But all in all, the bathroom was pretty acceptable. As far as the service crew in the airplane, they were young and motivated, and the reason that I mention this is because I've flown a lot of Delta flights lately, especially the long distance flights to the United States and back, and I don't wanna step on anybody's toes, but it just seems like, especially on these long haul Delta flights, the cabin crew are, let's say, getting towards the end of their career and they seem to be very often not very motivated, not interested in making your time on board special. Many of them, at least that I have encountered, seem to be more or less just counting the days until they can retire. So I appreciated having a young, motivated, fun and funny crew on this flight. And I honestly couldn't tell you if they were all based in a certain country because they seem to speak many different languages. So that's a good thing too, especially since they're flying from Germany to Spain and Greece and all the other destinations that they go to. And even though we took off about yeah, 20, 25 minutes late, we managed to land only five minutes past our landing time. And the Fuerteventura airport is a modern airport, I guess. In comparison to when we boarded the plane in Hamburg, here on Fuerteventura, we left the plane by a jetty or a gangway, so we were uh, like immediately in the airport when we left the plane. And it was kind of a long walk through the airport to get to the baggage terminal, but it wasn't so long that I wasn't surprised that by the time I got there, the bags were already on the conveyor belt. Wow, the bags got to the carousel before I did. That's quick. That's something that happens really rarely, so they must have really hustled to get those bags out of the plane and up into the airport because, yeah, they were already there when we as flyers got to the belt. That was my experience with Marabu. I didn't know I would be flying with Marabu. I thought I would be flying with Condor, but I really have no complaints. And now that I know that they don't serve complimentary food and snacks on board, I'll plan a little bit better. And when we leave on Saturday, I will be flying home with Marabu as well. So I'll get one more chance to sort of see what it was like. Thanks for hanging out here in my hotel room on the island. If you're researching Marabu because you are going to be flying someplace, let me know where you're going. And I hope to see you back here soon on the very unofficial travel guides. Bye-bye.